everybody, and welcome to Bad Movie Brothers. I'm Eric. I'm Chad. And this week we watched Bad Manners. Is this a movie people know about? This is a movie I had absolutely never heard of before. And I don't remember how it came to my attention for the show. But I it, I don't understand how people haven't heard about it. I don't understand how this is not a movie that people are talking about constantly for how crazy it is. Is it directed by one of our relatives? <laughs> it is it is directed by Bobby Houston. So you know it's not one of our relatives because his name does not begin with a J. Right. But beyond that, uh, this is a guy who directed like two or three other movies. Not a lot. The the movie he directed before this, and there seems, I haven't looked into it a ton. There seems like there's a lot of debate online about how much he directed this other movie and how much it is like maybe he like imported and re-edited a movie. But the other movie he's a credited director on is the samurai movie that a character is watching later on in this movie. So Bob, at this point, Bobby Houston's filmography, this is 1984, consists of a samurai movie, like a lone wolf and cub movie, and this movie, which is, we people don't even know what it's about, and how could they, because no one has seen this movie. This is, the best I can do is to tell you that this is a movie about an orphanage, and it's like a real weird, like, 80s kid movie, oppressive fascist orphanage. Uh, where the kids all like are you know pulling pranks and getting into hijinks and fighting the power one of them gets adopted away and so the remaining kids decide they need to go rescue him from his newfound adopted parents yep good job right that is that is my best shot at describing what is an indescribable movie i don't even know where to begin this is a movie Suffice to like this is the most like anarchic movie I've seen in a long time. This movie Ooh, has explain that word to people. Explain that word. Anarchic. Yeah. Explain. <laughs> it means yeah. you know it's it's very against the rules and against society. Like the characters are are very rebellious and fighting the power at every opportunity. Uh, the movie also just structurally doesn't really adhere to basic movie rules. Right. It's in our kick. Okay. Good. Um, but it, it, the, feel, the thing that I felt the most watching this movie is this movie very much had the spirit of like the, er, the weird early Nickelodeon shows. You sure. know, especially that it's kids versus adults kind of perspective. So it's like one of those Nickelodeon shows. It's like something like Salute the Short, Salute Your Shorts. If Salute Your Shorts was R-rated, because this movie is also like pretty R-rated. Yes. Which begs Actually, the no. que- which begs the question of who is this movie for? Because no kid would ever be allowed to see this movie. Not now. Not even then. Can you, like, this is a movie that if we had found it, we would have watched a million times. I don't think I would have gotten it then either. You don't, you don't think you would have got it? No, I don't get it now. Oh, I kind of get it. <laughs> Let, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go through. So this, I don't even know that we can really go through the plot of this movie this movie is less of a plot than it is just like these moments that are thrown in your face the so it it, we begin in this orphanage uh a supposedly catholic charity orphanage run by run by nuns that is one of these like movie orphanages where like all of the lights are inside of cages and the (laughs) And the orphanage workers carry cattle prods. They're all in a cage. It's a big, like, jail. It is. It's like a big detention center 
for these kids. We oh, we fairly quickly meet our principal kids who are largely interchangeable, but they're a group of four or five rebel kids that includes Mouse, who's like the youngest one. There's a, there's a girl in a referee outfit. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept calling her Mo because of that. All of our players. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. In this event, each player will have 30 seconds to defend their goal against two cannons shooting soccer balls at them. There's uh, and then there's there's a new kid. Like, it's weird because like a new kid gets brought into the orphanage and like he's like he's a rebel. And like you can see where it's a movie where he's like the rebellious one that like shakes up all the other kids. But all the other kids are already massive dirt bags already. Right. So they don't need this kid. To teach them to be maniacs. And much of the first act is about all of these maniacs deciding to be maniacs together. And to just terrorize everyone and everything. How many men have you killed? Don't you ever give up? Just tell me how many. Seven. How many with your bare hands? Eleven. Silence. So the the orphanage is run by um, at the top is a is just like a very authoritarian woman, who we find out later is a nun. I hope you realize you're going to eat that young man. All of it. I'm not hungry. Looks good to me. Can it, chubby? And she yeah. is essentially running this charity orphanage for profit and very much on a, how much money can I get from brokering these kids out situation? Imagine Cinderella's stepmother and you got her. Sure. Her Lieutenant is this guy is this like slicked back hair, nerd looking dude who is also a Nazi. Yeah. Like a legit Nazi. And he combs his hair. And then he smells it, and it's messed up. And then there's an elderly nun who can't hear anything and farts a lot. And they're they're trying to ride herd on this motley crew of children who are who are terrorists. And it's yeah. also but it's also one of those movies where it's not like it's not like Problem Child where theoretically there's someone who doesn't deserve what's happening to them. Right. It's more like I'll tell you what this movie is like. And you might not like this chat. This movie is like an even more demented Clifford in that Clifford is terrible and Charles Grodin is terrible. Right. In this movie, there are no heroes. Everyone is the worst. Who did that? Tasty spuds. She, the, the, the head orphanage lady is trying really hard to get Mouse specifically adopted. Correct. And in, in her first bid to do so, he shoves a water balloon into his pants to, uh, so he can make like he has wet himself to get these people to not adopt him. I have my instincts, you know. My dreams, my hopes, and my... And what, Ma? Which brought to mind my number one question, which is why do these kids not want out of this orphanage? Yeah, that's a good question. Also, it's not like he wets himself. It's like all of a sudden there's a deluge on this lady. Yeah, because he doesn't rig it up to like leak slowly. He just like jiffs <laughs> with like a 
he did. Yeah. It's wild. It is what like can't like the the biggest reason I I feel like this movie had to have been buried by society because I think if children had been allowed to watch this movie there would have been a revolution. It's like it's basically the nuns are Captain Hook and his gang. Sure. And the kids are all the lost boys and they are all stuck in the same house. It's bananas. Eventually, though, the new kid and the other kids all come to an understanding. They become blood brothers. Blood brothers. Too corny. You listen. Real blood is never corny. And it's at this point that uh, Martin Mull makes his Bad Movie Brothers return, having previously appeared in Cutting Class. And he and and his wife, uh, Karen Black, in a, I think, maybe the performance of the movie as a complete nut job. They, they're playing, they're playing this, you know, really like, I don't know, out of touch rich couple. And they adopt Mouse to be like an ex- a new accessory. And they take him away. Now don't you get snarky you with me, Warren Fitzpatrick. Back off, Gladys, and I mean it. Well, you arrogant, airheaded son of a I am not arrogant. How much are you people worth? For a while now, the movie becomes about Mouse at this new house. And the house is, of course, bananas. There's like these statues in it that are like painted with like polka dots and stars and stripes. There's a valley girl older sister to who think is the receptionist. She's a receptionist in uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Who cuts his hair? What's wrong with his hair? So 70s. No, 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 those are rented. Oh, you'll see. Uh, we're going to have lots of fun around here when there's somebody in the house who isn't... Spoiled rotten. Spoiled rotten! The second I saw her, I said, oh, don't tell mom. I thought it was her, but I thought there's no way that's her. This has to be no, another her. similar actress. That's wild. That yeah. is wild. So, yeah, so the, the big sister is Kimmy Robertson of Twin Peaks fame. And yeah. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, a movie which, by the way, I rewatched recently. Great. Completely holds up. Completely yeah, holds it's up. Great. Loved it. Loved it. Anyway, so, and then, so then they, they stick Mouse in his room, and we, are, we understand that there is a brother. Yeah, but he's problematic. There's, there's something wrong. Oh, he is problematic, all right. We also find out that Mouse is apparently a genius at computer finances. Yeah, he basically steals this guy's money in a second. You do all your banking from here, don't you? Uh huh. All, 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 the, all the domestic banking, yeah. Rolodex speed dialing. Very impressive. It's unbelievable. Uh, this is this also has one of my. This is a movie that is also del- it's it's gleefully and deliberately offensive and gross at as many opportunities as possible. And probably my my favorite moment of that is that the the new mom comes to his door and asks if he has anything for the dry cleaners. And he just <laughs> and he just sticks out a filthy jock strap. <laughs> Where I and why? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, also, uh, he gets in trouble for wearing sunglasses at the kitchen table in what I think is a fantastic exchange. Are those prescription sunglasses, son? No. Mm-hmm. Would you mind taking them off? Yes. And in that same seat, this is one of those movies where the craziest stuff you've ever seen just keeps happening. Because they're at the dinner table. He gets in trouble for wearing sunglasses. Then they're trying to get their their uh, maid to like bring him soup, and I think Martin Mull tries to get him to like ring a little bell, right? To summon the soup, 
and Mouse just swallows it. <laughs> but then what? Then what does he do? Please, please. Then <laughs> Martin Mole kicks him in the staircase and turns him upside down to try to get him to spit out the bell, but instead, like, a cartoon, all the silverware <laughs> and stuff that he's been stealing comes flying out from his clothes. It's bananas. It's bananas! So, meanwhile, back at the orphanage. Oh, yes. Our heroes, and I'm, I'm reluctant to call them heroes, our uh-huh. heroes decide that they need to they need to go rescue Mouse. So they stage an elaborate breakout from the orphanage. And then they they begin making their way across uh, the country. First by walking, then they go to a bus station where in order where all manner of chaos breaks out in the bus station. Yeah, you know, what was what happened there? What? What what was that? They're they're trying to figure out how to get mu- like it's again that's the thing about this movie is like seventy things happen in the bus station. And I'm totally fine if they're being chaotic in the bus station and everybody's just like watching them, but like everybody else gets into it too. Like the whole place goes crazy. Oh, everyone in this movie is a maniac. Because like there's there's a part where uh, one of the kids is playing three card Monty to try and make them bus fare, and while that's going on, another kid is pickpocketing a guy, and he takes his wallet, takes money out of it, and then gives it back and gives him the old hey, uh, that huge guy over there uh, stole your wallet, and this like little shrimpy dude goes oh yeah. And then he goes over there and just jacks the tall guy in the face. And then amid all the chaos, the kids decide to turn a a hairspray can into a flamethrower to set off the sprinklers. It's just utter chaos. Yeah. At the same... Oh, and that's not even talking about that when they when they try to legit buy a bus ticket, the guy working the bus ticket window is Mel Cooley from the Dick Van Dyke Show. He won four tickets to Santa Barbara. One way, Kitty Fair, man. With what you got here, you go halfway. Hey, you sure that's Kitty Fair? Are you sure you're kids? What do we look like? Bette Midler and the Harlettes. Hey, man, didn't you used to be somebody? Shh. I'm gonna have to see your birth certificates. Meanwhile, Mouse decides to run away from home, which he does by thumbing a ride with a biker babe who may as well be at a Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Wait a second. Smart. Wouldn't want to see those little brains spattered all over the highway now, would we? And then the kids decide not to take the bus. They take a taxi, and the taxi driver then just quickly gives them all beer, and they all just get drunk driving down the highway. Well, sooner or later, the the kids make it to Mouse's house, where Mouse is now not. Yeah, they well, they cross each other, right? Right, they cross each other. They get to his house. When he's not there, the... Kimmy Robertson talks them into staging a home invasion. She tells them where her dad's gun is and where to get all of the ropes and things to tie her and her brother up. Wait, go back up to mom and dad's bedroom and get the guns. Guns? Just do it. Well, don't just stand there. Find some silk scarves to gag us with. Yeah, what was that? I, because you're you're acting like any part of this movie makes any okay. sense. All right. All right. Fair enough. And so then they tie them all up and then while that's happening more shenanigans happen like driving a moped into a pool. Yeah, and a pizza guy comes and they tie him up. They tie up the pizza guy who then they give uh who then they give margaritas to by funnel. Right. And I, I have to jump back to driving the moped into the pool because when you watch it, it is clearly those kids. Yeah, they did. It, it. is 
clearly those kids. Who's allowing this to happen? Eventually, they reunite with Mouse, and then they steal Martin Mull's old-timey car, which gets stuck in reverse, and they have to drive it reverse down the road with several of the kids just sitting on top of the car. And again, these are not stunt performers. These are just the kids hanging out of this car. Well, then the adoptive mother comes out and shoots a gardener to death. This movie is bananas, and it ends with them, I, I, I believe, having escaped to Hawaii. Yes. We also miss all the parts where the the henchman is chasing them down, too. That's when we find out that he's a Nazi because he's listening to Nazi radio. Listen to the American Nazi hour. Well, we found out he was a Nazi earlier because he has a giant portrait of Hitler over his bed. Oh, yeah, that too. But he's crazy. He, I don't remember what happens to him. I don't Come remember back. what. He gets dispatched somehow. Like there's also, yeah. he, he also has a, a weird romance scene with the lady who runs the orphanage. What do you think? I love you. Don't be silly. I'm a nun. You're a woman too. This one was crazy. It was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. And I kind of loved it. Okay. I kind of loved it. Because it is, it is, this is, I think, the most jaw-dropping movie I've ever seen. In that... I was going to say, it, it kind of made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot, like, because that's the thing. Like, if I'm thinking about, if I'm going to endorse this movie, or what I feel comfortable saying positive like because there's a lot about this movie that is outright offensive but there's a way in which it it handles that wherein where it's so deliberately and casually offensive like it knows it's being offensive you know what i mean like it's Uh it's it's more like it's more like south yeah it's more like south park than it is, you know, uh, some old movie that you watch that just has some, like, massively racist scene in the middle of it. Sure. And, yeah, again, like, so whoever it was who posted to YouTube, they say in the comments that, uh, that the, they had spoken to the director and the director assured them that this movie will never be released officially. And I am sure that that is 100% true. That to me. I can't imagine you releasing this movie. I can't imagine that this movie got released. Right? Because again, who was this? Like, this is a movie that seems like the only way that it could possibly be distributed is on unlabeled VHS tapes that circulate inside of a middle school. You know, like, did you see this movie yet? You've got to see this movie, but do not let your parents find out that you are watching this movie. This movie is messed up. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, cra- but yeah, it, I, I don't know what to say about it, except that, yeah, I think I kind of loved it. I think I kind of loved it. Okay. Which means it's time to talk about where does this movie go? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a wild recommendation out there. Okay, I'm ready for it. I think this should be the first movie on our declassified list. <laughs> what? This is not a part of the regular canon, but still, still tracked. This is a movie that can't, you're saying that this is a movie that cannot be ranked. Right. Now, I'm coming into this, and I got to tell you, 
I would have be- I would have understood this movie appearing anywhere on the list. Mm-hmm. I think in my heart of hearts, it's a top five movie. Uh-huh. In my heart of hearts. But I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying that this is this movie is so not fish nor fowl. Correct. That it that it must be on its own list. And that maybe someday yeah. other movies will join it on that list. Correct. But but that said, had had you told me this movie existed before I saw it, I would not have believed you. Sure. So yeah, there we go. I will put it. I'm gonna put it on the back of the page. <laughs> Bad manners. This movie is in its way. I I, I want to say this, and I hope you agree. I am very glad I watched it. Yes. Like it is, and I and I think I do have to recommend watching it because it's so weird. To the right people. Sure. Well, yeah, I I don't think that our Aunt Chris should watch this movie. <laughs> or I think maybe she should be forced to. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, one of the two. One right. Of the two. It's extremes. This movie is all extremes. There is no middle ground. It is in its way a little bit like Meet the Hollow Heads. In that yeah, it is, kind of. is that it's so weird and specific that it almost demands to be watched, except I, I enjoyed this in a way I did not enjoy Hollow Heads. Right, right. Um, and we haven't even talked about the music. Oh. It's going to be a great music. Great music. From Sparks. Right. A band that I know literally nothing about, except that there is now an Edgar Wright-directed documentary about them out. So they're apparently oh amazing. Hi. They're having a moment, and it just so happens that we have seen this movie in that moment. Coinciding. That's right. So I'll make sure I put sparks in the in the notes so that people are like, there you mm-hmm. go. watch this. Tag. That's right. There we go. I guess that's bad manners. I don't know what else to say about it. Not much. I, there's, uh, not much. All right. Well, hey, we'll be back next time. And guys, when we come back next time, the next time you see these mugs, it will be for our 50th episode. Holy cow. So make sure you tune in for another episode of Bad Movie Brothers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. You have a million laughs.